Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. Every time we think that this episode is the one that had the most epic ending, House of the Dragon goes ahead and outdoes itself. Episode 1 ended with Rhaenyra's appointment as heir, and that was an extremely powerful moment. Episode 5 ended with Rhaenyra and Lenor's very private wedding ceremony being interrupted by Viserys' illness and rats hungry for blood. Episode 8 ended with the death of the king himself, and yet somehow, it'll be the final moments of Episode 9 that people will be debating and dissecting for years to come because of one simple question. Why did Rhaenys not stop the war before it started by taking out everyone instigating it when they were gathered in one place? And that is exactly what we're here to break down. So, spoiler warning before you go any further, in case that is something you guys care about. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What happened at the end of Episode 9 of House of the Dragon? For the two of you who didn't watch the latest episode of House of the Dragon, it ended with perhaps the most badass scene yet. And we are aware that we say that quite often on this channel. But hey, the showrunners know what they're doing. Prince Aegon walks toward the raised dais in the dragon pit, seemingly shedding his avoidant nature and embracing his birthright. After being anointed with the seven oils, he rises as King Aegon II and Kristen the Kingmaker places the Conqueror crown upon his brow. As the crowd starts chanting his name, Aegon raises his ancestor's sword Blackfire high above his head and leads them, but the cheers soon turn into screams as Princess Rhaenys Targaryen bursts through the floor of the dragon pit astride Melis, the Red Queen. The small folk of King's Landing are either crushed underneath the carnage Melis's presence entails or fleeing the dragon pit as the Queen, who never was, squares up to the high towers. King Aegon cowers behind his mother Alicent as Queen Helena is covered by Lord Commander Cole and all of them expect to be burnt to a crisp, but curiously enough, Melis only lets out a blood-curdling shriek in Alicent's face. Her fiery breath does not come bellowing out of her gullet. Instead, she just turns around, squeezes her way out of the gates, and flies off into the sky presumably making for Dragonstone, host haste. Before the Red Queen takes to the skies, Princess Rhaenys shares a look with the now dowager Queen Alicent Hightower that seems half a mercy and half a warning. But the question remains, why did Rhaenys not burn Alicent and her kin on the spot, especially given that this was the perfect opportunity to avoid the civil war entirely? Let's look at a few possible explanations, hmm? The Greens are coming for you, Rhaenyra, and for your children. Rhaenys is not meant to have died in the dragon pit, and so it would be unwise to have her do something so drastic. The first season is a bit of a cop-out, but it stands nonetheless. In Fire and Blood, which House of the Dragon is based upon, Prince Aegon's coronation is a very different affair. For starters, it happens ten days after Viserys' death, not the morning after. And Prince Aegon is not drunk and trying to flee the Seven Kingdoms on the morning of. Aemond One-Eye and Vhagar are not in the capital either, for they have ventured forth into the Stormlands to secure support for their liege. And the most notable absence is that of Princess Rhaenys herself, who is supposed to have been at Driftmark at the time of Aegon's coronation. House of the Dragon chose to take things a different route clearly because not only was Rhaenys in the Red Keep on the night of the Green Council, she witnessed Aegon's coronation firsthand both of which did not happen in the books. Her conversation with Alicent revealed that she was clearly opposed to the Greens' plans, and so when she appeared on Melis's back, most of us did expect to hear her scream, Dracaris. But the thing is, had Rhaenys done that, she'd have most likely been killed in the dragon pit itself, and that would have screwed up the entire trajectory of the show. And we say this because thinking that she would have walked, flown out of that domed structure after having killed the new, publicly anointed monarch is worse than a fever dream. Rhaenys was not even wearing a helm, and a well-placed arrow is all it would have taken for a bowman to bring her down. If it was not one of the Gold Cloak's household guards and Hightower knights that had crowded the Great Stone stable, it would be one of the small folk. And more than that, if she had let loose Melis's flames in the dragon pit, she would have also risked creating three wild dragons simultaneously, as Sunfire, Dreamfire, and Vega were also residing in the pit at the time. It's possible that one of the three, or all three green dragons, might have risen up in rage against the Red Queen and caused a certain storming event far earlier than it's supposed to take place. Or it could simply be a case of plot armor 
because the dragon pit at King's Landing is not where Rhaenys and Melis are supposed to die. The Queen, who never was, and her Red Queen are one of Rhaenyra's foremost assets in the Civil War, and they do go into battle to fight for their Queen. Given the fact that House of the Dragon has taken care to not deviate majorly from the events described in Fire and Blood, lest they piss off the a story of Ice and Fire community once again, we don't think they would have risked such a radical move in the first place. So, while it was entirely possible for her to take out all the major players of the Greens in one fell swoop and leave the aging Hobbit Hightower and the young princeling dare on the daring to pick up the bloody pieces, it would just not have been consistent with the events of the dance, and neither would it have been consistent with her character. And sure destruction and instead toward peace. <laughs> it's in the name of peace that you've imprisoned me. Rhaenys is called the queen who never was till this day for a reason. When it comes to succession struggles and usurping birthrights, Rhaenys has more experience than anyone else in the series because, as you might recall from the very first scene of House of the Dragon, she was supposed to be queen. Rhaenys was a dragon rider by the time the Great Council of 101 AC was convened, and she would have had more reason to burn things to the ground back then than she did when Aegon was being crowned. For starters, her entire claim was rejected on account of her sex, and in the books, her son and daughter were also passed over because of the same reason. Despite hearing that Lord Corlys was gathering ships and men to defend Leonor's rights, we never hear of Rhaenys playing an active role in such martial provocations despite being more of a threat as the rider of Melis. I would humbly ask for the favour of the Queen who never was. The first episode also shows us that Rhaenys herself is quite perturbed by the decision of the Great Council till this day, and is not ashamed to laugh at her cousin Bodomon's expense because he called her the queen who never was. So, it's not like she doesn't see or hear veiled insults either. The simple fact is that Rhaenys Targaryen is far smarter than succumbing to cheap provocations or even the stealing of her birthright as she saw it herself. She knows the consequences of being a dragon rider and all the responsibilities that come with it, and it is for that reason that she did not let Meles loose at any time that she was slighted on account of her sex. It is possible that this is also why she holds back in Episode 9, because she knows that if she unleashes her Red Queen in the Dragon Pit, then she would go from being the queen who never was to the female Magor, the Cruel. Rhaenys is exceptionally perceptive and knows what Viserys tells Rhaenyra in the early stages of House of the Dragon, that the truth does not matter as much as the perception of it. This is why she tolerates the existence of Jacaris, Luceris, and Joffrey Valerian, despite clearly knowing that they are Harwin Strong's bastards. Rhaenys Targaryen is one of the best players of the Game of Thrones, and she knows that by letting Alicent and her kin live. She is preserving her best options from both sides. If the Blacks win, Rhaenys would be the first to be toasted, as it'll be her warning that will allow Rhaenyra to organize her forces. If the Greens win, it would have been her mercy that allowed allowed them to even get there. Either way, Rhaenys holds the reins, but we don't think that this is the reason she allowed Alicent and her children to live. Sure, some of the arguments we've made here might end up coming true regardless, but the reason for Rhaenys' sparing of the greens might just be more sentimental than it appears at first glance. Well, that and in service of avoiding the worst taboo, according to Westerosi society. Have you never imagined yourself on the iron? A Mother's Mercy, A Queen's Wisdom, and The Taint of Kinslaying One of the most interesting scenes in Episode 9 was the one shared by Queen Alicent and Princess Rhaenys because it shows you just how on their game these women are, even in such a tense environment. Alicent has Rhaenys barred in her room in the Red Keep because unlike the rest of her royal captives, Rhaenys had Melis, who was chained up in the Dragon Pit, and she was therefore her closest prospective ally slash enemy. Alicent is very aware of the fact that Rhaenys knows Rhaenyra's children are bastards. She has seen her husband at court for years and knows just how ambitious Lord Corlys Valerian really is. She remembers the outcome of the Great Council and knows firsthand just how unfit for kingship Viserys was. She decides to use all that knowledge to her advantage now as she calls upon her cousin to defend her son's rights. Alicent knows that Rhaenys won't care about Viserys' last words, which she herself has misinterpreted, and she's proven right the next instant when Rhaenys correctly deduces that the Hightowers are usurping the throne.
throne. Alicent then says something that can only be a desperate attempt at winning Rhaenys to her side. She says Rhaenys should have been queen. Alicent tells the queen who never was that Viserys would have made a great historian, but he was as unfit for rule as she was fit for fighting in the front lines, and Rhaenys is taken aback by this admission. She admits she never thought to hear these words from Alicent's mouth, but states that the word of her house is not fickle. Alicent uses the death of Rhaenys' children to rile her up against Rhaenyra and says that she should have been queen by blood and by temperance. But here we are. She then states that while they might never rule directly, they could guide the men that do to a gentler path away from sure destruction. But Rhaenys has heard enough of her prattling. She demands to know what has happened to Melis, and Alicent admits that if she allowed Rhaenys to go over to Rhaenyra, her former companion would be compelled to go to war, knowing she held the advantage. Without Melis, Rhaenyra might be pressed to negotiate, and Alicent goes on to say that a true queen counts the cost to her people. For that, Rhaenys calls her wise but then she calls her out for weakness in the face of patriarchy. She correctly surmises that Alicent does not wish to rule and make the changes she is speaking of herself. Instead, she continues to toil in the service of other men. Rhaenys cuts deep when she asks Alicent if she has never imagined herself on the Iron Throne because she is right about her. Alicent has always been a slave to duty and doing the right thing overall. So, when the two women meet again in the dragon pit, Rhaenys decides to show the Green Queen what the dragon's mercy looks like. She lets Alicent and her children live because she knows what it's like to lose her flesh and blood. She also does not want to be attainted as a kinslayer, of course, because Alicent's children are of her blood. She and Wyseris shared the same grandsire, and like it or not, Aegon, Aemond, and Helena were Rhaenys' own blood. If she had loosed Melis's flames on them, she'd have become the second Targaryen kinslayer in Westerosi history, right behind, <laughs> you guessed it, Maegor the Cruel. Rhaenys is of course aware of her family's history and the extent to which they've distanced themselves from Maegor's legacy. She doesn't want to be perceived as the same, nor does she want to bring down a similar storm that arose in the wake of Maegor's coronation. And more than that, it's primarily a mother's mercy and the desire to show Alicent that all her decisions are wrong that most likely stayed. Rhaenys's whip. Because while she doesn't want to leave Alicent's family embittered, she does want to show her that all she is doing is in the service of men. Alicent tried to draw an analogy between herself and Rhaenys in that speech she gave to her by using Rhaenyra as an anchor, but she forgot one fundamental detail. Both Rhaenys and Rhaenyra show the willingness to rule from the front. Theirs is a battle that looks to change the way that inheritance itself works in Westeros, whereas Alicent simply wants to preserve the status quo. So, while most of what she said in an attempt to lure Rhaenys to her side was true, it ultimately held no meaning because she didn't presume to exert her authority as a queen in the full sense of that office. This ideological difference and the fact that she tried to use her as a political pawn with such impunity could just be why Rhaenys decided to spare Alison and her children. But if you want our objective opinion, it was probably a combination of all of these things. Sure, burning Aegon, Aemond and Helena there and then would have only left Old Town as the last bastion of the Green Faction, but it would have turned the entire realm against Rhaenyra and Rhaenys for the simple fact that they slayed their kin and caused a second burning in King's Landing that looked to wipe out opposition to Targaryen rule with force. The people of the city are not so old as to forget the many torments they faced under Maegor's rule, and even Jaharis and Wyserys' reigns were not entirely devoid of issues. Jaharis' reign especially was marked with several illnesses sweeping through the kingdoms, and Wyserys the Peaceful was as pacifist a man as you can place on the throne despite his wish to have been tested. Ultimately, Rhaenys' decision was a wise one for her, though it also sealed the fate of the realm. How that comes back to bite her is what we'll see in the second season of House of the Dragon, but for now, all hail the queen who never was. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us, even if you haven't already. <laughs> have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.